Ah, oh, hello YouTubers. Uh, welcome to my build on the JP Power Sky Surfer plane. Uh, I used to fly back in the early 90s, haven't flown for ages. Uh, I'd like to get into FPV eventually, so I thought quite a few people use this as a platform. It's also known as the Bixler. Um, what can I say? What do you get for your £47, which is what I paid? Um, well, basically I just bought the airframe which comes with a motor and a propeller. Um, as you can probably see, it's not the best setup for video I know, that uh, the connectors for the motors, they are very, very small. I don't know if they're 2mm, so that's going to be one of the first jobs is to try and replace those with some larger ones. Also the wires are a bit thin, so I'm hoping they're going to take the current draw. Uh, people also say that there's washers to balance this plane. Can't see any in mine, all that's down the front there is a piece of polystyrene which comes to about there. It's on a powerful light, can't see anything in there so I'm going to leave it and see how it goes. Um, what else is there? Obviously you've got the canopy with the little pilot figure that's helping with magnets. It's quite secure at the moment so I'm hoping that's going to be good as well. Tail plane, which slots in like that. Anybody building it? I don't know if, you can see if this bit's coming out well here. Make sure that that isn't flush if you put the tailplane on first with the back there, because if you do, you can't get the fin in. You need, would need to trim it, so it needs to be pulled back a little bit, like that, and then it will slide in. Um, goes together very well, as you can see. Again, like on other videos, don't forget to exercise the control surfaces so that they're nice and free. So we'll put that little bit to one side. Oh, have said the canopy is secure. Just went off. The wings. Hmm, wings, yes. You've got the removable bit here where the spar goes. Now I want to make my wings removable and I've seen various methods of doing it, holding it on with magnets, rare earth magnets in here. Not too keen on that. So I'm going to go down the route where you put some trying to make these so I can take them out if the servos ever pack up. Put some reinforcing tape over there and then make up or buy some little hooks and hold the wings together with the rubber bands as seen on some others. So the spar, which they supply here, um, will obviously be removable so I'm hoping that it's going to be strong enough. I've also, if you can see, run another piece of carbon fibre down the middle and super glued it in. I've done that already because I have heard reports of the spar breaking. But uh, if you're doing FPV work, I wouldn't think you're going to be pulling any major G's. What else is in the box? Well, not a lot. There's some uh, pretty awful control horns there. Would you really want to just um, rely on those glued in? So I'm going to pop down my local hobby shop later and get some which have got plates on the other side and clip on. You also get the uh, push rods for the ailerons and a rudder and the elevator which look a bit bent but I'm hoping they'll be alright. I've uh, been recommended to use you who pour glue for gluing the polystyrene. Servos, servos, yes, nine gram servos. I went to Steve Webb Models, the servo shop. I ordered a batch of 10 and a speed controller from him. I ordered them on the 10th of April. They were here less than 24 hours later, so I would highly recommend Steve. If you ever see this, thank you very much. Such a speedy service. Oh, uh, you do get a propeller and an adapter with the plane, which I've put in here because obviously I've had it open. Also got a replacement um, APC 6x4E propeller. I'm using a 35 amp speed controller, so a little bit overkill maybe, but I needed it to get, which I've seen on Bruce in Australia, I've forgotten his name, RC Model Reviews, recommends you have at least a 3 amp Beck on here, so that's a speed controller. And these are the Tower Pro servos, uh, SG90s I got A grades because they're only a few pennies more, and uh, for reliability. So, there we have it, let the build commence. Oh, one last thing, a lovely instruction booklet in Chinglish as usual, which, well, what can you do with the instructions here? I mean, really? Anyway, stay tuned for part two. Bye. Well, welcome back again to part two. This will be quite a short video because I'm just gluing the um, horizontal 
stabiliser on using the Yoohoo Pour. I've already applied some to the actual wing itself. I'm just going to put some on the fuselage part now. It's just like a contact adhesive but obviously safe to use on polystyrene. So just spread it thinly like that. And then you have to wait for it to go touch dry, which I say is about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, as I say, I might say this is part two, but I might edit all the build into one long video or several shorter ones. This sounds like I'm rambling, which I am, but I hope you enjoy it anyway. And uh, but this really does come out well. A little bit more on the wonderful instructions that came with this. I have actually picked them up and having a quick flick while I wait for the glue to dry. They don't tell you what sort of glue to use on it and I think the instructions are more aimed if you have bought the almost ready to fly version which has servos because they show you servo leads in the instructions here poking out the wings which obviously there aren't. I've bought some um, extension leads for it so I hope they're going to be long enough but let me just give you a little bit of example of the Chinglish just here. Step 5 Install the steel to the wing rudder, the steel which connects the servo in wing, pick 0809. Wonderful, isn't it? It's obviously all in different languages as well. I wonder if it, when they translate it to Italian, Spanish, French, German, I can see here, whether it all comes out a bit funny like it does in English, but then English is a funny language. I want a quick word on batteries. Batteries. It's in the local hobby shop, so I bought an Overland uh, 3 3S 2200 LiPo, no um, connector on there, uh, so I'm going to use an XT60 and it cost me £20. Um, I've ordered some from Hobby King, it's my first order from them, and I paid $8.99 for each battery. And there was a few other bits and pieces I got bordered to make up the weight and it still was cheaper with postage than one battery in England. I um, don't know how long it's going to take to get here, but I guess if you plan advance, in advance rather, then it's well worth it. Um, I was looking at the AXN cloud jet thingy that Bruce recommends, but decided that after paying postage with it, um, this worked out about the same price. Um, so I hope it's as good, uh, plus there's a problem if Somewhere along the line, somebody drops something heavy on your box, it gets damaged. But uh, they certainly are cheap, Hobby King. Uh, I've got a tracking number, and my order has left the country. So it's a bit like always leaving the building. Uh, no idea when it's going to be here, but at least it's on its way. And I guess I might get caught for customs, but fingers crossed. Right, I'm now going to attach the horizontal stabiliser to the plane. I've just been uh, jiddling the fuselage about a bit and having said there were no washers etc in the nose down here what's come loose listen isn't that going to be good for the uh, centre of gravity I don't know if you can see but down there there is just a polystyrene bulkhead about here so I'm going to attack it with a knife in a minute and see what falls out right let's see if we can get these rear wing on I hope this, you can actually see this, because I can't actually see the monitor, because it's just a little video camera I'm using. So we make sure that goes in there. And that, as you can see, seems to have stuck very well. making sure that it's straight. Not too bad. And the fingers, I'm sure it will be held nicely in place. And the fingers on like so. So, I'm going to add a bit of glue to the fin and stick that on once the glue has dried. Glue in there. And on the bottom 
there. I'm sure that's done out of shot. When I was flying in the early 90s, you had to make everything. There was very little ready to fly around. Well, there was some, but it was expensive. It wasn't made out of foam either. So, amazingly cheap stuff these days as well. Well, I think it's cheap. I mean, just I remember buying my first Futaba 6 channel radio set. It was about £150, and you can get 2.4 gigahertz stuff. So about the same price, what, 90, 20 odd years later, 25 years later maybe. Absolutely amazing. But uh, I see these things buzzing around on the uh, YouTube, and they look pretty good. Well, I had a rummage around, I cut the bulkhead, and this is what fell out. A little bit of steel with the most minute amount of glue to hold it on. No wonder it didn't stay now. I'm glad it came loose now. Not later when everything was installed and to make it harder to get out. Alright, just going to stick the fin on. Hopefully in shot again. Hateful stuff. There you are. Easy as that. Excellent stuff this uh, Yoo-hoo, UHU, however you like to pronounce it. Pardon me, glue. Um, I guess the next thing to think about is putting servos and control surfaces on. But as I say, I've got to go out and get some horns later. I was on about the, um, the very minute connectors on the motor. And I do actually have some locking around, some bigger ones. I think they're three and a half mil, I think. So I'm probably going to try and solder those on in a little while. But anyway, that's that done. And this next job is to think about putting some servos in it. Um, any of you subscribed to RC Model re Reviews are aware of this site, the Mad New Zealander, Mad Kiwi. He recommends to hot glue the servos in, which I think I'm going to try and do to see if it actually works. Um, because I think if you use servo tape in here, then it's going to make the servo stick out, and that's not going to be good for aerodynamics. So Bruce just seems to put a dab of glue here and there, and it seems to do well. I might put a bit in there and then squeeze it in the servo in quickly. Um, I was at about taking the, the removable bit for the spar. It's a very good fit. You wouldn't believe polystyrene could fit so well. So I was worried about breaking it. Oh, that one. I haven't removed it's actually they've put some double sided tape inside just to hold it in place I could have put it a little bit on the outside I think this is the one I've already removed yes there you go and you can see the remains of gluey tape in there which I've taken out the other thing I'm going to have to do is trim in here a little bit to take the extension lead plug joint whatever you like to call it in there so anyway I'm sure it will all work out and it will probably crash on its first flight Okay, well, been doing a bit of work on getting the servo in the wing. As you can see, I've added an extension lead, a 200mm one. As you can see, the plug comes halfway down the wing. Of course, when the plug's in there, this little covering strip doesn't lay flat. So I've carefully trimmed a little bit out there. If you can see it, I hope that's in shot. And then with my old trusty permagrit tools I've had for donkey's years, I've also cut out a small flat on the covering piece and if you can make the plug lay flat that way, hopefully that can work this time. Let's try again. You can now see that, that once the tape is over it and holding it down is a good fit. I'll take a little bit more out. As you can see, and I think Bruce from RC Model Reviews just gives a little dab of hot glue there and there, and that holds the servo in. All sounds a bit rickety after balsa wood days for me, but seems to work. Okay, I've taken the uh, little camera off of the tripod, so hopefully things are a little clearer now. Um, these are the E Flight horns, I actually have glue on at the moment because. 
I still intend doing a belt and braces job in gluing them on. Um, one thing I think maybe I should have mentioned is when it comes to the wings, putting the servos in, make sure you put your control horn on before you glue it in, otherwise you won't be able to get at it and you'll have to tear it out of the wing and swear a lot. So these have also been, I've made sure these are in the neutral position, by just hooking them up to my receiver from my DX6i which would you believe has never flown a plane yet and I've had it for about three or four years so good all the best laid plans of mice and men and all that so anyway I hope this um, video is of use uh, I've never actually done any YouTube builds before we've got here my voice droning on and hope I don't sound too much of an idiot okay um, servo still isn't fixed in but I've added the new control horns and the push rod and the post um, if you're doing this don't forget to add some thread lock to the screw that holds the wire push rod and the nut on the bottom of it I hope that you can see that I've run the wire down the little channel and there's the extension for the uh, plug and I've put a little bit of double sided tape on that. I'm not sure if this is in focus, so I apologise if it isn't. And continues to run out on the end of the wing. Now, if I add the little cover, you can see that it fits nice and hopefully now you can see that it fits nice and flush. Can't do two things at once. And with the reinforcing tape, it should make it removable and so if the servo over packs up I can replace it with not too much trouble okay well this is the end of the segment um, or the part of my build for today run out of time got other things to do now as you can probably see the aileron and rudder servos are just pushed into place temporarily they seem to fit very well and you can also see the push rods for the same control surfaces um, as I say, this is the first commentary I've ever done on YouTube, broadcasting to some of the world if they listen. I hope it hasn't been too boring, and hopefully we'll be able to conclude this build later in the week. So, thanks for watching if anyone has. Bye!